What is up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin Bees. I am a wife. I am a mom, a military veteran, and I spent 13 and a half years in multi-level marketing, healed my way out of it, found human design, found myself, and now I am using my platform to help other people do the same thing. If you are brand new to my channel, I would love to have you subscribe, turn the little bell on, um, you can also become a member of the channel. We do some fun stuff and I always, put, I always, I always put exclusive content out and I hope that, uh, that, I don't know, it's just fun. Anyways, um, in the links below, you will find, uh, how you can follow me on social media. Although here is my handle right here that you can follow me on Instagram, Instagram and TikTok are probably where I'm the most, uh, active. Here's my TikTok handle, so you can follow me there. Um, I do have a podcast, and all of that is linked below. I have merch that is available. Check it out. I have a lot of fun creating some merch. Uh, and if you have any questions about that, let me know. If you are not brand new to my channel, hey, what is up? Thank you for coming back. Thank you for you know, continuing to comment and to interact and all of the feedback and just being here. I see you. I appreciate your energy. And just know that. Um, I will never take this platform for granted or any other platform for granted. So thank you guys for being here. All right. So this week has been a little bit different with the content that I'm putting out on my channel because a lot of you wanted the first part. So the, the video that I recorded earlier this week with my friend Dre on the leaving the empire and just, just talking about things in the empire. And if you're not sure what that is, the empire is the team that I was on. Um, in Prove It that I just recently left in July. Dre also left like last week. <laughs> um, and there's been a lot of people, we've kind of created this, this community of people that are either in the empire and wanting to get out that one foot in, one foot out that Dre was talking about. Um, or they are people that have left, that have reached out and, and now we're building this really beautiful healing community from people that have left or want to leave. And it's just, I don't know, it's been really cool. So today's video, you're going to notice the language is very different. I it, When I recorded this with Dre, I had no intentions of actually putting the video on any other platform other than my podcast. Um, I just like recording through Zoom. I just think it's really easy because it separates the video and the audio for me. However, you guys wanted to see it. So this is the bonus episode that Dre and I recorded. We, I believe, dive into the giveaway a little bit more and a bunch of other really cool stuff. So I would love for you to interact, even though it's not really for YouTube. We're putting it on YouTube, but interact. Um, I will comment back like I always do. And I hope it brings you, I hope it brings you peace. I hope. I hope it brings you peace. Perfect shirt for this video. I hope that it brings you the, I'm not alone. This makes sense. I'm, I, I thought I was alone. I'm not alone. Cause that's kind of been the theme, especially with the conversations that I've had with Dre on this podcast. So, uh, if you haven't listened to the podcast, I think it's on eight or nine different platforms. You can also grab that in the links in the video description. Um, give me a big thumbs up for the video. If you would comment, do all of the things and, uh, let me know what you thought of this interaction with my friend, right? And by the way, go follow him, go subscribe, go follow him on Instagram, go subscribe to his YouTube channel. He has a cookbook coming out and it's, it's going to be really amazing. So, all right. Love you guys. Enjoy the video and I will see you later. Bye friends. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Beast Mode Podcast. My name is Erin Bees, and I am here with my friend Ray again. And y'all were pretty loud about a part two, so <laughs> we thought we'd throw a bonus episode together. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> very vocal they were. They were very vocal. By the way, if you have not listened to our previous version, uh, make sure that you... Oh, my husband just brought me an energy drink. Thanks, babe. Thank you. Uh, thanks, honey. Um, if you haven't listened to, I'm going to open this. Oh, this is like an ASMR thing. ASMR. 
There you go. And the fizz? Here you go. Oh, I don't think you can hear it. I don't hear it. <laughs> uh, but if you have not listened to the last episode, highly suggest that you do. And I mean, after that episode dropped, like, how was your day, Dre? <laughs> wow. So I, for those of you who, who did hear it, I'm sure you heard the nerves that were in my voice, because when you share your story, you just never know how it's going to re- be received, mm. right? Yeah. Then... Of course, I woke up at seven, like 10 after seven or 7.15. And the first thing I did was to go see it. I'm like, oh my goodness, it's there. So it was like, it, it was real. And then I would say probably about two hours later, the very first message came in. Mm. And then the second one. Mm. And then the third, fourth, fifth, seventh, up to, I think I got 12 messages. Wow. Um, and what really stood out the most from those messages were thank you for not making me feel like I was alone. Mm. I wanted to cry because I I think, I think what really happened and since we're just being so honest is people thought I was going to speak with you and be a bashing person type of thing. And that's just not my flow. This is more, I'm just sharing my personal experience with people. And I love the story. Some folks even said, you know, we're in in the thick of it. Um, <laughs> and, I'm not uh, singing like, that this time. No, we're not going to sing it list. today, but it was the only word that came to mind. But because they're still in, they're just not ready to take that step out. And I told them, listen, nobody's forcing you to do anything. Just know that you're not alone. And know that, and that we see you. Talk. Yeah. You know? How was your day after it dropped? Um... <laughs> Y'all have been blowing up my inbox and it's been amazing. Kind of the same as you. Uh, It was overwhelming at times. It was emotional at times. I think, I don't want to say I'm the first one to speak out because there's been several, Mm -hmm. but in the past, what I noticed was there was one person that spoke out and then the fear mongering, the smear campaigns kind of shut that person down. And that's not happening this time. I, just like you, was very, very nervous. Like, if you go back to my first YouTube videos where I'm talking about leaving MLM after 13 and a half years, you can see how nervous I was. Because just like you said, I wasn't sure how it was going to be received. But people started to reach out. And this has been the same case. What has happened is now there's this whole community of people specifically that used to be in the empire are currently in the empire or were thinking about joining the empire that decided not to do it because that was some of the messages that I got. Hey, I've been watching whoever for a long time and they were wanting me to get the, you know, the, uh, the big promoter pack and there's a promotion going on for that or whatever. And I decided not to join after watching your content and like just all the messages have been really incredible. Uh, That podcast has, I showed you this morning and I mean, I'll pull it up now, but typically, and because I'm a fully transparent person, my podcast is not something that gets a ton of views or listens, not views, listens. I mean, it, it gets some listens and stuff. It's usually about, I don't know, 60, 70, maybe 80 views or listens downloads, whatever, over a short period of time. Uh, Like my last one that I did was on October 7th, and it was on diet culture and how MLMs, especially like health and wellness MLMs, use that, you know, to manipulate people. And that had 80 plays. And just to give everybody perspective, because I think that there's a lot of, oh, well, you know, they're just, they're just making that up with people being in their inbox and this and that. In one day, the podcast, the last podcast that we did, we're at 119 plays in one day, which for a small podcast, like what I've had, you know, uh, that's massive. And that tells me that people have been waiting to know that they're not alone, which was the, the whole theme of the last podcast. So it was overwhelming. There was a lot of messages. <laughs> um, I'll tell you, one of the main things that really stuck out the most, and I have it up on the screen here, was when you spoke about the bike model. Mm. You had asked me the other day, the last podcast, what it was. I really didn't know. 
Yeah. You explained it a bit, but I did a deep dive on understanding the bite model of cult mind control is explained. Um, and of course, what was his name again? Stephen. Dr. Hassan. Stephen Hassan. Yep. I, of course, I ordered the book because you start to realize, and I literally, like I sat in bed, like biting my nails the night before it launched. And I was like, what's going to happen? What's going to yeah. happen? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? And it was because I was, that mentality was so ingrained in my brain Mm -hmm. of like my, the opinion of others is so critical. And then at the, I I woke up and I was like, what is wrong with you? That does not matter anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're not associated with the company anymore. So you Mm -hmm. can, I mean, you can say whatever you want, you know? So, I mean, is there going to be backlash? Of course. But those people that are gonna do and say something still listen to the podcast and i still make money off of it so thank you guys for listening (laughs) away um yeah but i mean it's been it's been really cool it's been i feel like this is going to help so many people heal um yeah i feel like it's gonna help a lot of people heal it's in i really like i was saying in the last podcast i want to start using my platform now for helping other people tell their story because it is a very scary thing because of the past and what we've seen and, you know, the, um, the social media BS and like all of that stuff. And, and again, if this is your first time listening, just understand that it doesn't matter what anybody says you assign words or value to their, to their words. And so I think that's all part of the healing process. But today Today is an interesting day. Dra- interesting Dre day. Okay, <laughs> I mean it is. But today is an interesting day, Dre, because mm-hmm. today is the first day of that. The the uh, I don't know. Is it fifteen? Is it twenty? Is it twenty five thousand? Twenty three thousand dollar giveaway. It starts actually today. Did you know that? I, actually, no, I didn't because I'm not involved. I'm not in the in in the know anymore. Yeah, um, I think when the first one happened several months ago, I think it was thirty thousand. Then it dropped to twenty thousand. Then it dropped to I don't even know how many thousands. It just kept changing. Yeah, I'm. Uh, so you don't know anything ab- about the giveaway? You want me to like fill you in? Oh, kind fill of me in works? because I literally am completely out of the okay. loop. I love this. Tell oh, give me. Said, all let me know all the tea. So this giveaway that they're doing, they have all of these prizes and. Uh, (laughs) the promoters that want to participate have to pay $20 in order to make their customers eligible. Okay. So that's called a pay to play. That's what that is. And I know that part because I had to pay about $20. Oh, you did? In the empire. Oh, yes, Mm, ma'am. Okay. I'll talk about that. So it's happening in their group called Simple Proven Results. And basically what they do is they go live. I've heard, I've heard multiple things. I've heard, you know, multiple times a day, I've heard they're going live every hour on the hour. And it's basically a sales pitch. They want you to buy ketones. They want you to join the team. And in that live, they give some kind of a code word and then people drop the code word. And then that's how they do whatever giveaway for the day. However, they will also mention that, hey, if you go to this, if you go to your promoter's website and you buy a box of Mitoplex or whatever product they decide to pick, you'll actually get a hundred bonus tickets for this drawing. Okay. Can I just stop one quick second? Yep. And how are they going to validate that? Right. How do you verify that? Well, and what about people that are, what about customers that are in the giveaway and they participate, they go to their promoter's page and, you know, in order, or they log into their account, they order the Mitoplex and then they find, find out that they're not eligible because their promoter didn't pay the $20. Okay. So can I just piggyback on that one? Yeah. So from my personal experience of when I participated in this Christmas in July, I think it was the last one I participated Mm -hmm. in. Um, they, they, I think they, the, maybe it was, the, I can't remember. It's either the first time they did the giveaway or I think, well, well, I paid the $20 for each one. I think the first one she did it and then she asked for money. And then the second one, every promoter had to pay. Um, and I had an issue with that because we were told, again, this is just me recalling, mm-hmm. uh, that if you did not pay and your customer was the one who was chosen, oh, well. They'd go on to somebody else that paid. 
How is that fair to the customer? Mm. What are you going to do? Call their name? Oh, the winner is so-and-so. Then you go verify. Oh, I'm sorry. You didn't win anything. I don't know if that happened. Yeah. But. I want to know how they're selecting the winners. Mm. Because allegedly it's being said that the winners are picked um, by a computer software or an app or something. But are you putting everybody that participates? Because there's going to be people in the comments of that video in the group that participate and their promoter didn't pay the $20. Like, how are you filtering that out? And if you're filtering that out, you're rigging the contest. I'm pretty sure that's illegal. And I'm pretty sure the FTC would like to know about that. Most likely. Yeah. Because if you think about it, you have this group that has over 600,000 people, but that's the simple. But when it comes to these, um, and can we talk about that too for a second? Like they created an entirely separate group for this giveaway. For the one in July, right? Right. You had to belong to Simple Proven Results before you could be added to this other one. Oh, that's weird. So you had to be a part of... From my recollection. So you had to... You you couldn't join the giveaway group without being in SPR. Oh, that's weird. So for those of you who don't know, that's that's Jesse Lee's uh, customer group called Simple Proven Results. Yeah. I think that's important for people to know that too. Um, So with it being the first day of the giveaway, there's going to be lots of things to report. So I feel like we should tell people how they can report those things because it needs to be reported. And why? let me actually just back up before we talk about that. Um, Why is this illegal? Well, according to the FTC, you cannot do, there's certain type of giveaways that you can do. Um, There's a lottery. I can't remember all the specifics, but you can go to the FTC website and you can check it out. Uh, What they're doing with requiring people to buy whatever product from the website to get the bonus tickets is actually very illegal, uh, according to the FTC. So that needs to be reported. Um, And actually, what they are supposed to do is provide the detailed information before people participate. What does that mean? Well, if if they're going to have sales presentations on the hour every hour. That's supposed to be in written form and provided to the people that are going to participate ahead of time. The winners, all the terms, all the conditions. And in addition to that, the, the winners are supposed to actually, they're supposed to pay the tax on what they won. And that's not happening. The other thing that I'm wondering is, so as the promoters pay the $20, I And by the way, I hope that those of you that have paid the $20 are writing that off. My question is Jessie Lee also writing off that $20 because she's the one making the purchases, right? So like if she's buying all of the prizes, it's not like she's going to say, well, half of the money or a quarter of the money came from promoters and they've already written it off. So I'm only going to, you know, write off 75%. Do you see what I'm saying? So So it's like a double write-off. Yeah, I've been thinking a lot about that because I know that whenever she does purchases, she has her main credit card that she uses. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know which one it is. I don't have any of those details, but there's always one that she adores. And my question is, so this is the third time they're doing this. They had the first time, then Christmas in July, and then now we're doing Oktoberfest. Mm -hmm. From what I gather is the name of this. shindig yeah so the very October first one she claimed to buy she allegedly because i don't have proof that she did but bought all the gifts everything she bought everything and then, yeah she bought all the gifts and then we kept hearing about the thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars that she was spending mm. then the second time around promoters had to pitch in 20 dollars to help cover the cost so isn't it a tax write-off for you yeah. So why are you trying? So I didn't understand. Like for me, why the me, change in the two? Yeah, I just I didn't understand. And maybe I don't know. That's if anybody knows and wants to share why that is. Because think about it. If you're everything is a write off for you. Yeah. This is your entire organization, right? Then mm-hmm. why are you charging all the promoters twenty dollars to offset the price? Is it because you have to hire additional vir- virtual assistants? Are you look like what is it? Yeah, what is that money going towards? Which I think should be provided. That's just me thinking out loud. Like, where is the money? Yeah, and where is that going? And what is it covering? Yeah, like and you maybe she talked about say that. You're a seven figure, eight figure earner, allegedly. 
Yeah. Um, why are you charging your team? <laughs> and maybe that's something that she shared with her her leaders or whatnot. But I think that if you're asking to spend twenty dollars, I want to know what that twenty dollars is for. If it's for the prizes, cool. But why? Yeah. Why was the Christmas in July one done where you covered everything, and now we're splitting them? And why the why the difference in the amounts? Because I swear I see like. TikToks that are one is like twenty three thousand, and then it's fifteen thousand, and then it's twenty thousand. I'm like, can y'all pick a number? Like, what are we doing here? You're confusing everybody. <laughs> it's crazy. I get it. I get it. I listen. I felt trapped to that too, but I think I started with thirty thousand. Then somebody told me no, it's twenty thousand. Then somebody told me no, it's twenty five thousand. So I, I think it just goes with whatever way the wind blows or how you feel at that exact I get, moment. I get that. I get that. So as you guys start to see all of this stuff, or if you're in that group, Simple Proven Results, and you're kind of starting to see things and you're like, wait, I don't think this is right. Simply just screen record whatever you're watching, especially if it's including, you know, asking to buy a product for bonus tickets or any of those things, um, just screen record it. And you can send it right to report fraud dot ftc.gov you don't have to include your information you can provide the details uh, make sure that you tell them the group and um, they will do what they need to do on their end so if you see that and it doesn't matter what platform uh, if it's if you're in the group cool go ahead and report it if you feel called to do that if you're seeing tiktoks if you're seeing you know, things on Instagram or reels or, you know, those types of things, just, just report it because the only way that we can shut stuff down like, like this down is if we all pull together and start reporting it. So, and we have a very powerful network. I have learned (laughs) recently I have learned. So uh, my it inbox is. is going crazy right now, Dre. Like I'm getting messages. Even I, Listen, I understand that. So I, what I wanted to say also, and I think you might have mentioned this the first time we spoke, is that this isn't, like I said, this is not about bashing. This is not about, That's right. this is just getting the truth out there from our personal perspectives because we were in yep. it. Yep. So I'm just sharing what I learned, what I felt. And because I know I had, I did have someone say, well, you're just mad because you didn't work your business. Yeah. I did. I received that message and I was like, no. And that's okay for people to, you're not going to have, not everything is puppies and rainbows, you know, That's right. you are going to get the good, the bad and the, in the indifferent, but I'm like, bring it on. I will share my truth. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, you know, my numbers being shared, like we talked on the last podcast. Mm -hmm. Well, of course my numbers dropped. I stopped working and I was pulling away and I was just like you said, Dre, one foot in one foot out. And I had to work through that. And there's nothing wrong with that because no number in any back office is going to determine my worth and my value and what I'm meant to do while I'm here. And unfortunately, when you're into the thick of it, (laughs) it's, it. (laughs) (laughs) it's, uh, it's hard for you to see that because there's so much, there's so much, uh, value that we at the time wrapped around rank and income and, you know, all of those types of things. And maybe that's some of you listening right now and just know that the rank doesn't matter. The numbers in the back office don't matter. It, it, you're a human being and yeah. you're more valuable than especially any MLM company, you know? So I think yeah. if, I can, if I can share what I did learn uh, from someone yeah, I won't mention their names because of like they're not a public figure or anything. Was that I, my 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 online activities were being tracked and monitored? Stop it! I kid you not. <laughs> that was said to you. <laughs> my I was kind of. Oh my god! That my online activities in the anti MLM world were being oh. tracked and monitored, and that oh I was god. very involved. I'm like, okay, since when does having an opinion have anything to do with a business, quote unquote, business that I was running? You're not a promoter. So what are they watching? I I hope y'all are enjoying the show because I'm like, because I'm not a promoter. I have my termination email confirmed. I'm like, I am not involved in prove it whatsoever. That to me sounds like whoever said that to you or however that came out, Mm -hmm. that they didn't know that you were no longer a promoter. They probably didn't know. Wow. I can't believe somebody said that to you. Or 
I can't believe that was said about you. I guess that's a better way to say that. That's crazy. But I was so. But in the grand scheme of things, in 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 the world of MLM and Improve It and Jesse Lee in the Empire, I mean, mm-hmm. I was just one person. Why are you tracking what I do? Because you're. I wasn't even profession. a high rank. You know what I'm saying? It's like why why are you tracking what I do? I have an opinion about this. Well, please share it because okay. I'm like, why are you tracking me? I believe. Everybody that knows you knows that you are a beautiful soul. I knew it from the second I met you. And I'm sure that there are so many people nodding their heads right now listening to that statement. And when somebody that's a good person leaves something like this and starts to speak out in their authentic way, it's undeniable. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you can't, if there was somebody that was uh, super shady and had sketchy business practices and they left and started to speak out. A lot of times what you'll notice in MLMs is that they leave one M- MLM to go to another one. Correct. So they'll start bashing their leadership from the other company. They'll start bashing, you know, the company and the products and all of this stuff. We aren't doing that. We're I'm not saying coming to another MLM. Yeah. I'm not joining another MLM. Hell no. But no, not happening. And so it doesn't fit the mold. Well, that makes sense, though. And that's, that's why totally people are sense. listening. Yeah. And I, I really strongly believe that that's why people are listening. And I think because for me, how I left and how I left quietly and I didn't really say anything and things were being said about me and I kind of let it go. And then it was like, I had to tell my story for my healing. I had no idea that it was going to have the impact that it did. I had no idea that I would be busier than I have ever been with scheduling podcasts and like all this stuff, but I'm so grateful because of the healing that's coming from it. So if you're wondering why some of this stuff is being said about you, it's because you're more influential than you can even fathom. And it's because you're a good human, you know? Thank you for that. I appreciate that because I just, I know, I know. So from some of the folks that are still in the empire and reached out to me and one actually sent me a a voice uh, message crying Mm. uh, saying, I really wish I could be as brave as you are. Oh my God. I I literally just had me in tears in in my car while I'm working today. That was the message that came through. And then there was another large leader in prove it who sent me a message and said, thank you for your authenticity. Mm. And I was like, I've also had some top leaders outside of the empire when I first started to speak out, reach out to me and thank me for, um, Hey, you know, I was always wondering, I kind of caught this vibe specifically from Jesse Lee, but I wasn't really sure. And you just affirmed all of it. So thank you for that. You know, so very interesting. Yeah. And like, listen, if if, if that's your thing and you're happy, you're content I'm not here to change your mind otherwise. I'm just sharing with you what I've experienced. Literally, I was a follower. Mm. Like I was one of the sheep, if you Mm. will. You go in biblical terms. Not that I'm really religious, but it's the only thing that came to mind. Yeah, I get you. You you follow, you love your leader, you do all these things, but then you start to notice that there's some discrepancies in feelings. I'm very much about emotions and Mm. how I feel. If your energy conflicts with mine, I'll know right away and I will put up my red flag and be like, Mm-mm, these are the warnings. Yeah. So that's when that started to happen is when I started to just take that step back. And I think it took a lead from you where I just literally gradually just started stepping away. Yeah. And then I would get added into some other chats to try and re-engage me or get me re-engaged, but I just pulled away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I get that. It's probably the best thing. And if you're it. currently in it, then just take your time. When you're ready, you'll know. That's right. You will know because it's it's seriously is like one day you wake up and you're like, I'm done. And that was I'm it done. for me. I woke yeah. up. I sent in the email. I'm like, I'm done. Yeah. You know, we we were talking about um, things. Uh, what? How did you say it? How did you say it about disrupting your spirit, upsetting your spirit? How did you say it? It doesn't Uh-oh. sit well with my spirit. I it doesn't sit well said. with my spirit. It was a hundred percent what happened. So in July, before I resigned, the the weeks prior to that, I, I think I resigned like on the 23rd of July or something this year. And I just felt this stirring in my spirit, like, oh God, I am 
I am done. I no amount of money. And at the time I was making like a thousand to $1,500 a month, you know? Um, and I was just like, no amount of money is worth it because this is where people get locked in because I had the car, right? I hadn't qualified for the car bonus. I think it was either November or December of the previous right. year. We'd been paying it. It's all good. I was hanging on to that a thousand to 1500 partly to pay for that, but it was kind of like, what am I hanging on to? What am I hanging on to? It's that, and I have to tell you, that's probably why I stayed as long as I did. Yeah. Because I was so used to that little extra income that was coming in. Mm-hmm. So my one foot in, one foot out kept my one foot in because I was like, ooh. Yeah. And that was my own personal dangling carrot. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no. Yeah. Do I miss it? Sure. I'll make it up in other ways. But I was like, I can't let that be the reason I stay because that's not a good enough reason. No, it's not because the money isn't worth it. Like yeah. the money is not worth the emotional trauma that comes from it and the um, diminishing self-esteem, you know, that you're, you're not good enough or you're not doing enough or, you know, and when you look at the income disclosure statement and you realize exactly where you are, it's like, there's two different people. Well, there's what I'm showing on paperwork, but then there's how I really feel. I feel like, you know, I'm not doing enough, that that kind of thing. So that's very interesting. Uh, I think it's also important to mention because one of the questions that I get and have received so many (laughs) in the last 24 hours has been, well, how do I resign? How do I cancel my account? You know? And I think it's important that we provide that. You just have to contact customer service and you have to ask them to cancel your account. And, uh, yeah. So by the way, I did not know until I learned that from you. A lot of people didn't know that. Yeah. I was like, I was like, is that what you have to do? Because that's what I did. Mm -hmm. I remember there used to be a button in the back office to cancel your account. I remember, I don't remember what year it was, but when I went in to to cancel my account, I was just going to go in and press the button. And I was like, wait, there's no button. And then I was like, well, I guess I have to contact customer service and, um, that, de- that definitely took several days <laughs> for them to get back to me. So did you feel kind of like I felt, let me just ask you yeah. when I sent it in, I was like, are they going to notify her? Um, I, I planned on them notifying her, but by that point for me, I had been so removed from everything okay. that I think in her mind, I probably, you know, I was probably already kind of removed in a way. Because for me, I think that's what was my hesitation to actually doing it. Mm, Like, are they going to forward this to her? I was afraid. Listen, you want my honest opinion? I'm going to tell you my honest opinion. I was afraid that there was going to be some backlash from her. I did. Yeah. Little old me. But this is how it's almost like it's ingrained in you. The fear. It's like, well, you know, you see her... I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm-hmm. I've seen all sides. And um, I, I, there was a part of me that was very fearful of like, what's, is there going to be retaliation? And, yeah. then I, and then I realized, I'm like, I'm not even in this company anymore. So what, what you going to say? Yeah, you can say whatever <laughs> you want. But that thought was there. Yeah, totally I get that. It was there. I get that. I think before I started speaking out, because I, I mean, I resigned the end of July and I didn't start my YouTube channel for, you know, anti MLM purposes, I guess, looking back until the following month, I think it was the the last week in August. So, you know, I don't, I don't, I think in that month I was kind of like, well, what do I want to do? You know, like I would wake up and be like, what do I want to do today? And I think I took a lot of naps (laughs) in that month. (laughs) Um, I made some new friendships. I watched a lot of anti MLM content and I think that was when I was like, well, I gotta, I'm ready to tell my story because I was very quiet about it. I had some feelings, don't get me wrong, (laughs) but I was very quiet about it because it was my journey, you know? So yeah, it's interesting that we both kind of felt the same way. It's true. But I want to ask you because I'll tell you. When I started watching, and I don't even know how I came up upon the anti MLM. I don't. I, I don't think it was one of your videos, but it popped up in my feed. 
Yeah. On YouTube, because I'm notorious at night. I don't sleep. I just watch YouTube videos, cooking videos, all these different things. I love that. And I watched, um, I think it was Cece Suarez. Mm, oh, shout out to Chelsea. That's right. I think <laughs> it was, she did a deep dive on Jesse Lee. Mm. If y'all have not watched that, I'm 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 gonna put I'm gonna put the link to that video in the show notes because it is that good. Is that the one with the cease and desist letter? Um, I'm not sure. There's, she's got some really good. Ones. No, I think that's a different one. I think that's, that's a, a different, different one. video. Okay, you're talking about the one where it says it's like a red and black and gray. Yes, yes, thumbnail. yes, yes. Yeah, that I'm gonna put the link to that in this okay. podcast for sure. But I started watching that, and it, all they did was reinforce the feelings I was having that they were valid. Yes. I need y'all to hear this. I didn't think my feelings were valid. Mm. Like I thought they were figments of the imagination. Mm -hmm. And then here's Chelsea talking about something that's already within me. And I was like, oh. Mm -hmm. And Chelsea was never a part of the empire. She was never a part of Prove It. But just like our inboxes are being flooded, so are hers. And they have been for quite some time. Yeah. So I just reinforced that I'm okay to have these feelings. Like I almost want to cry because when you start to think about it, you literally doubt yourself. Yeah. And when when you I you think realized, you're crazy. Yes, I'm like I can't be thinking this way. I'm like this is my leader. You know, they yeah. would never do anything against me or wrong. I'm like again. She loves me. She cares about me. Like she knows about my life. And right. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. again, she's always said. I'll love you where you are. So that just kept really, like, it was like yeah. on a loop in my head. Yeah. And then when I realized that it was a lie. Yeah. Cause we know that's not the truth. That statement correct. is not the truth. When I realized the lie was there, the cycle broke. Mm, that's powerful. And then, and then I was able to follow my own instinct and intuition and watch some more videos. And probably mm-hmm. that's when I started getting trapped. Who knows? <laughs> mm. But uh, no, I think I started getting tracked when I followed you. <laughs> I think that's so funny that you're being tracked. Like, why? Shouldn't y'all be focusing on your business? I don't oh understand. A little, little cause... Puerto Rican from Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. But, but yeah, that. That, that, that was that. That's crazy. I'm, I, I can't imagine how much my activity online is being tracked by them. Maybe they're listening. Hi, friends. I would love if they're listening. If you're listening, say hi. Yeah, let us know. You can message us. It's okay. What that means, you have to unblock us. So, oh, that's right. And you know what's funny? (laughs) I don't have anybody blocked on my phone. I don't have, I still have their phone. Nobody's blocked on my phone. Yeah. And you got my number. You can call, you can call me up. Oh, yeah. Right. I think I realized that something was wrong when I didn't see um, her her Instagram stories anymore. And Mm. I was like, could I be blocked? Mm-hmm. And sure enough, I am. Yep. Yep. But, it, it, you know, that is what it is. I, and I think the beautiful thing about your platform and what's going on now is where it's going to go and how it's going to help so many people. Mm. I have a hard, I receive that, but I have a hard time receiving that because yeah. when I'm creating content and I'm telling stories or I'm, you know, covering a, a company or I'm doing MLM horror stories, um, that's, I, I'm not doing these things to mm-hmm. cause this, I don't want to call it even a movement. Cause that sounds very arrogant. Um, and I don't mean it that way, but, um, I just am focusing on what I'm doing at the time. And I've had so many people that are like, you don't even realize what you're doing. Like you're, you are creating such a safe p- place and a community. And I have a hard time receiving that because I'm just doing what feels right. I'm just doing what I, you know, I'm trying to, in a sense, right the wrongs that I have participated in. And so, yeah, I guess that's what I want to say about that. I don't know. Well, you're not alone because um, at the, at the very first message I received after the podcast uh, dropped was from somebody who was also exiled. Mm. Fall from grace. I love it. You're going to hear that a lot, I'm sure. You should put that on a t-shirt. They were like, thank you for just validating my, what I, what I've been feeling. Cause Mm. I felt like I was just like a castaway. I was just tossed to the side. It didn't matter that I was there for years, that I volunteered, that I did this, that I did that, that, you know, I had passcodes to everything. 
I was shut to the side. Yep. And yep. that's when you realize, because you're literally, and I think you mentioned this, Dakota, you and, and, and Julie Joe, but if you, all of your friends are with you in your company and you have no other friends, yep. when you have that quote unquote fall from grace, let me ask you, where are your friends now? Yeah. Yeah. They, a lot of them have probably blocked you, you know? Yeah. So were they truly ever your friends? Right. That's where that transactional. I was is. just going to say. It. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it literally, it just makes you think. And I need people to think because I, when, I think when you and I got into this, we went in with blind faith. Mm-hmm. Am I wrong? Yeah. You're, you've got that right. I went right in. I did all the things. And when you have a whole different perspective, people, one will question you as to why you all of a sudden changed your mind or perspective. Yep. Two, they'll start following you and listening. And then all of a sudden they have an awakening. Why am I doing this with my fingers? I wish y'all could see it. Cause I'm like, this is flashbacks of doing Facebook lives, <laughs> <laughs> but literally it's like, right. <laughs> Drop me a three in the comments. If you agree oh, with that. God, don't even start. <laughs> oh, or if you're watching the replay, I miss you because I, what is it? Sorry, I missed you. Whatever. I can't even remember. But it comes across like, I miss you. It comes across right. like, I don't I know. I miss you too. Right, 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 right. So weird. I was like, I can't even say that. I was recording a food video on Facebook the other day and I was, I almost said that. And I was like, I had to stop myself. It's so weird. I've done that too. Where I think I said, I don't know. I don't remember if it was, I think it was um, either a YouTube video or a YouTube live. <laughs> And it was, you know, if you're interested in something that I was doing, whether it was like a human design reading or something like that, you know, drop me a, and I stop and I said, no, <laughs> message me on Instagram. <laughs> I think I watched that because you're like, no, <laughs> I literally, the finger me. came up and I said, no, we're not going to do that. You can message me on Instagram. <laughs> but it's true. It's true. So I'm going to ask you something out of the blue. So you have this yeah. beautiful platform. And I know that your inbox is literally blowing up because mm-hmm. um, if I'm receiving a lot of messages, I can only imagine oh my God. what's happening with you. Where do we go from here? Mm. Um, for me, I think it's just about supporting people. Uh, I'm getting a lot of questions on how do I start a YouTube channel? How do I do this? How do I do Whoa. that? Which is really cool because, you know, I got a lot of help from Julie Joe. I got a lot of help from Chelsea Suarez, you know, with how to start the, how to start my YouTube because I didn't really know. I mean, I had a YouTube, but it was really because I was uploading um, keto kitchens because I was tired of looking for the lives on Facebook. So I uploaded the ones that had lots of views. I uploaded it to YouTube so I could easily just send a link. So I had no idea what I was doing. That's a cool idea. Yeah. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. I was just tired of like searching for all of these lives, you know, when you're been, when you've been doing them for however long, it was just really overwhelming. And I was like, well, I'm going to make this easy on myself. And that was why I started my YouTube channel. And I think that was 2018. So yeah. Um, but as far as where do we go from here? I think us, number one, us continuing to heal. And there's going to be layers that are exposed to us that we didn't even realize and being able to kind of sit in those feelings and honor those feelings and work through them and sharing those things. Yes. And I don't mean, I don't mean sharing everything. <laughs> we don't need to share every aspect of our life on social media, but when there are things that we are going through that we know other people that are like, I feel like we're a couple steps ahead of some people in their healing journey. And so by us sharing specific aspects of that, I feel like it's going to help people go one step forward, you know? So just supporting I, people with it. And like I said, just from the messages I received um, it, today, yeah, mm-hmm. today, I tell you, it's been a whirlwind because I literally, I almost said it was Saturday. Yeah, that's I felt the same way. <laughs> Like literally I had to charge my phone twice and normally my phone, the battery lasts all day. Oh no, not today. Yeah. Tons and tons of messages and feedback. And I just want people to know that we're here if you need to talk, because we know how difficult it can be to actually yeah. pull away. What I did do because of you is order the book, Combating Cult Mind Control, which is Stephen yes. Hassan's book, um, because I just think it would be an interesting read. And I feel that reading that, I'm going to start pulling those layers. Yep. 
and I might be triggered a couple of times. I you just will be. Feel it, and I'll share that with people. Yeah. There's a couple other books that I really do suggest to, not just for you, but for also people listening. Um, one is Ponzinomics. That is all about the history of how MLMs were started. It all stems back to Amway. Um, there's a lot of political ties and um, lobbying, and it's just, it's crazy. And it's not a Democrat or a Republican thing. It's from, it's everybody. So that is one that I highly suggest because it's going to show you when you look at this, because one of the things that we hear is, well, my company is different. The leadership is different over here. The product, the comp plan, that, 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 whatever, it's all different. It's all the same because it all stems from Amway. When Amway was sued by the FTC in the 80s, the reason like they won the case because it couldn't be proved or whatever that they were a pyramid scheme. And so now the defense that every MLM has when they're going against the FTC is, oh, we do the same as Amway. So that book kind of covers the details of all of that, which is really amazing. Um, The other book is the one that you just suggested. So that is really, really good. Yeah. There's a lot of overlap, in my opinion, when it comes to cults and when it comes to MLMs. So that will be very helpful with understanding why you did some of the stuff that you did, why you felt the way that you did, and just fixing that pattern because it's a pattern, you know, that fear is a pattern. So, and then the third book I'm actually getting ready to read. I haven't, I haven't read it yet, but, um, I'm hearing really amazing things is a book called cultish. Oh, I think I've heard of that. I'm ready. Yeah. That. Yep. So, um, asking questions, and learning, uh, and I mean, my anti MLM journey started from a TikTok video by Roberta Blevins. <laughs> and for me, I just needed to check myself because not once did I stop in that 13 and a half year period and think, well, maybe I should research the other side. There was no other side when I started in MLM. That wasn't a thing. And there so wasn't. Now, yeah. And so now to have access to this community, and the stories and the education and all of the things, it's like, I wanted to stop and listen. And so I stopped and I listened and I was like, that happens, what she's talking about. And she wasn't even talking about Prove It. She wasn't talking about uh, the empire. She was talking about Lula Roe. And then the Lula Rich came out. And if you guys haven't watched that, y'all need to watch it. I, the, right. That was, that was mind blown. I binged it in one night. I, I couldn't stop. It was like a train wreck. I had to watch it. It's the same thing in different it companies. It's crazy. So, um, that's awesome. No, I definitely, I'm going to order the Ponzinomics and the cultish because I think what's happened is I need to reprogram my brain mm-hmm. to almost like love myself a little more and yeah. not it's it's the unlearning of what has been ingrained for the last four years. Mm-hmm. And I think that is going to be a journey and it's okay that it's going to take a little time. That's right. But I think because of people like you that we have now where we can actually go and say, this is how I'm feeling. Am I crazy? And we were like, well, yeah, we're all a little crazy, but no, you're not crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I think for me, one of the, one of the scariest things for me was not being scared of the stillness because there's so much there when you're in an MLM and you're moving up the ranks, there is constant chaos. There's zooms, there's chats, there's, you know, responsibilities, you're working with your customers, you're working with your teams, uh, or your team. And, and there's, there's no, real downtime because you're, you're, you've got all these plates spinning. I think this is the perfect example. You know, you've got your customers, your team members, so you got two plates going, then you step up into leadership. Now you have leadership responsibilities and you have all of these plates and you're trying to keep them all going at the same time. Well, if you stop the plates drop mm-hmm. and when the, when, when you're not spinning plates, that's a very scary space because you're like, I'm not making progress. This is terrifying. But in that stillness is where the healing begins in that stillness is where you start to unpack some of the emotions and the, the thoughts and identify the patterns. And if you're running from that stillness, then you're, you're, you're um, stifling your, 
your mm-hmm. healing journey, you know? So, yeah. It's the truth because when you're in it, um, like you said, when you're going up those ranks, and I don't think, I think this is something that isn't really spoken about because I think the perception is, and just in my opinion, is that you get in a company, you start to build, you start to build, and it's just you, your customers, and your team, and that's it. And in our, in my perspective of what was in, I must have been in about one, two, three, four, five, five, six chats. Oh, I don't even know because we were encouraged to be in all the chats Uh because as you helped people, if they were new, more than likely those people would be moved under you. Correct. Yeah. Allegedly. Allegedly. Based on my experience. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Did you hear about the the changes to the policies and procedures? Oh, it's funny you say that because I had one of my former uh, team members send me this screenshot going, oh, because that happened to me probably two months ago. Mm. I, I, I said I was in danger of losing my account. It would be downgraded to a customer. And I think for me, it was 60 days. I don't really think. Yeah, I think, I think people they were saying 60 or 120. I don't even know. Yeah, they send they send it at 60 days and say you have 60 days. So it's like the halfway point. It's 120 right. days according to the policies, but they'll send it at 60 days. Like, hey, you have to get a new customer in 60 days or you're going to lose your promotership. I have some issues with this. And I know you do. You too. have issues. <laughs> I was like, hold on a second. Because in from my perspective, when I got that message mm. and I remember it, I was like, bloody hell, what <laughs> is this? <laughs> Did you just say bloody hell? <laughs> bloody hell. I'm British all of a sudden. Don't, don't oh come at me, people. Don't come at me. It's the wine. It's the wine. Oh, my God. I love it. Yeah. Uh, but, and first of all, like, yeah. isn't the $49 supposed to be an annual it's fee? It's an annual promoter fee. Okay. So explain that to me. So <laughs> if it's an, okay, if you, if you as a new promoter, we'll just run the new promoter and then, um, a promoter that's been around for a while. That, that's okay. the two scenarios I think we should run. First, if you're a brand new promoter and you don't get a customer in your first 60 days, they send you that notification. Um, and then they downgrade you after 120 days to a customer. Sure. You lose the $49 that you just spent that was supposed to be for the year. Uh-huh. And so, then, yeah. And then you have to pay it again to, to get it back. That's so crazy. So if they're, in a sense, getting rid of the $49 promoter fee, why don't they prorate that and do it at a four-month increment, right? That would be what? That makes like, perfect sense. Like $4 or something a month. So it would be like, okay, you could join for $16. bucks. you have got 120 days. If that doesn't work, you get downgraded to a customer. That would be the right thing to do, the ethical thing to do. Oh, my mother is like literally, we should rest in peace, is literally screaming in my ear going, her favorite saying was common sense is not that common. Mm. <laughs> wise woman that one <laughs> she's like common and i my whole life my sister my everybody can attest her her saying was common sense is just not that common mm, it's really not and i think what they're doing is really shady in my opinion i think that they okay let me let me back up let me back up i'm getting ahead of myself so we've got the new promoter Let's Correct. let's back up. Oh, to, sorry. Let, I, I yeah, I know. I got it was me. I got <laughs> sidetracked. Um, but then we have somebody that has been a promoter for a while and maybe has kind of stepped away from their business. They pay their promoter fee earlier in the year, um, and now they get this notification. And let's say that they have customers. You know, let's say that they have. Excuse a me as an example. Pretend I'm that person. I used yeah. to be that person. So you have a handful of customers. You have a handful of of promoters under you that are working, doing their thing in the way that they want to do it. But because you haven't signed signed up any new customer, new customers, even though new you customers. have, yeah, you have a a business with customers, current customers and promoters. But because you haven't been signing new business, you're going to get downgraded. And when you get downgraded, you still get your prove it box, you still get your free stuff, but you lose any money in your wallet that you earned. Yeah. So let's unpack that for a second. So how is that? First of all, how is that even ethical? How is that legal? Legal. I'm thinking of the tax. Like if you're a 1099 contracted employee, which you are through Mm -hmm. any MLM, and 
prove it says, Hey, we paid you this amount, yeah. but they go, Oh, well, poof, you didn't sign up any new customers. So the, I don't care if it's $2 you had in your wallet. I don't care. That's money that How you do were you paid take that away from people. But they are though. Like but that's what I'm saying. Like how how could you do that? If you're downgrading somebody, the only difference between a promoter and a customer is the money in the wallet. So if somebody has a balance in the wallet and they're going through it and haven't been super connected, and all of a sudden they go back they're to log into their it. account and the money's gone that they were saving for Christmas or God knows what else. I mean, I know some of my team members leave their money in the wallet. Oh, there's a lot of people. Members. You know, they have thousands of dollars in their wallet. Yeah. I, and because of this, I was like, y'all need to just transfer your money out. I was just going to say. Some shady stuff. I was just going to say, if that is you, get that money out of your wallet ASAP. ASAP. I mean, this is pretty sus. Yeah. It's, it's Well, and then, so prove it is saying we've paid them this amount. It's going on the 1099, but then they don't actually access that money for what you know whatever reason and then they get rid of it where does that go prove it is still going to write it off it's still going to show up on this person's 1099 they still have to claim it but they never really got the money so that's where i'm just and i, I come from a family of lawyers and mm. I, I, I took a lot of legal classes just because i was fascinated by the law i, I just i don't see that i don't i just it doesn't the dots don't add up do you think that they are going to lose a lot of people? My opinion yeah. is, is that they are going to lose some people. Some people are going to be very angry that they will probably change this again. Mm -hmm. My mind has an idea of where this thought came from. Mm. Do you <laughs> want to speak on that or no? And it's okay if you say no. <laughs> um, I just think that some of the leaders, uh, my former leader, po allegedly, possibly could have influence maybe i just for me mm. knowing the person i could see where that thought process because i remember in some zooms it'd be like well if you're not working your business what are you doing mm, yeah you know and then with these ftc letters and stuff that have been sent you know the ftc is like hey you need to have a certain amount of customers to you know in a ratio to your number of promoters you and i both know when covid hit last year they went mm -hmm. crazy with this keto dollar club thing i remember which is instead of the 49 dollar fee it's a dollar fee but you still have to buy product correct and that probably brought a lot of promoters in and it's probably skewed their numbers and when you have these numbers when you have these promoters promoters at the company that are a certain rank that aren't making any money what does that impact well that impacts the income disclosure statement and it also impacts the the, the leader's wallet mm -hmm, that if too you start thinking about it yeah so i think that this is i don't think any of this is a coincidence i think that this has been in works for a while because they're seeing their numbers and going <gasps> We don't have enough customers and we've been, you know, trying to recruit, which, because that's how you make money in any MLM is by recruiting. And now they're, I think they're kind of panicking, but so isn't that the essence of what people call a pyramid scheme? That's absolutely. And by the way, a pyramid scheme can have a product because how many times I know I've heard it, I've probably said it. Well, a pyramid scheme is illegal. A pyramid scheme doesn't have a product. No, pyramid schemes, according to the FTC, actually can have products, and they do. So my question and all of these policy changes and all of this stuff is, I would love to know, and for those of you that are listening, you can message Dre or myself with the answer to this question. Has there been a new agreement that everybody had to sign, or did they just change this and roll it out without having people sign a new contract because it is a contract. You signed a contract, you agree to certain terms and the contract has been changed. So typically what happens is in the past, when there were changes made to the policies and procedures, when you logged into the back office, you would have to agree to the new terms. And then you would say, yes, I agree, put your initials or whatever. And then you right. have access to the back office. I want to know if that has happened at any point this year to reflect the changes that they've made, specifically 4.2 in the policies and procedures. So I, I because I just left, and uh, didn't they just release a video several hours ago? 13 hours ago. Very yeah. issue? Mm-hmm, yep. 
So, I mean, I, whatever it is, it's, again, like I said before, before you do anything, ask questions mm. and read the fine print. Many of us sign these things blindly. I know I did. So I'm Same. speaking for myself. And it wasn't until the very end that I actually read the entire thing. I was like, oh, what did I sign? Yeah. 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 Read all the fine print. But I want to know. I want to know the answer to that. Yeah. Because I, my gut is telling me, and again, this is just based on my opinion, that they probably did not send out a new policies and procedures to be signed digitally. Uh, because they would have a lot of people upset, which also, in my opinion, would explain their posture on social media and the videos that they're doing. Um, it, they're almost, it's its almost like it was an afterthought. I watched it. Mm. It was not very organized and well thought out. It was almost like we need to have a response. Because people are panicking and they're angry. Yes. Yeah. Well, there's going to be more angry. That's my opinion of watching the video. Yeah. There's a lot more people that are going to be a lot more angry as more notifications go out and as people listen to this. And uh, I think we talked about it in the video that I did with Julie Jo as well. I think that's where I heard it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. um, Yeah. So that is pretty much, it's been a wonderful day. It's been a wonderful day. And I'm probably going to take a nap after this. What are you doing after this? <laughs> uh, I probably have to go walk my children. Uh, that would be my my four legged children, people. Oh, I don't I, the yeah, I knew what you meant. Well, the, the <laughs> listeners probably don't. The people again. listening, you're like, walking as kids. The dogs, yeah. the dogs. But yeah, no, it's it's been a beautiful journey. I think I appreciate the awakening. Mm. It's, I'm seeing things with uh, a renewed sense of hope, almost. And it's yeah. hope in knowing that me sh- that us sharing the story is allowing others to just recognize that they can accept what they're feeling as truth yeah. and not just this fictitious thing that's made up in their mind. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Well, um, I think this was this is a great place to end this. I think yeah. that um, we're giving the people what they want, Dre. <laughs> they, I, listen, I when I jumped on your live and I saw everybody. Oh no, we need a part two. We need a part two. We need they a part were two. going. I was crazy. like, oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. Well, they like, were okay. going crazy. Yep. So if you're if you're listening, thank you so much for listening. We appreciate you. Make sure to go follow Dre on Instagram and yep. his all YouTube Dre in the channel. kitchen. Yeah. When are you going to start cooking again? I need to know this. So we're starting the recording of YouTube videos tomorrow. Mm. Uh, They're going to be holiday themed because I think I've been getting a lot of questions like I need help to make this for Thanksgiving or Friendsgiving, Hanukkah. I love this. Some great recipes I have for Hanukkah for Christmas, Mm. all sorts of things. So that's going to be that's. So I was asked if I, and I think I mentioned this before, but because I have my life again, my Mm -hmm. passion has been renewed. God, that's beautiful. Yeah. You found yourself again. We lost ourselves for a minute. We did for a hot minute. Yeah. A hot four years. (laughs) Uh, Well, let's just, we don't need to, we don't need to address a time period. Just a hot minute, but we don't. There's a new focus. (laughs) There's a new, there's a new energy. And uh, I love you guys. And if you need us, we're here. We're here always without judgment. Exactly. But if you see any of the giveaway posts, send them to the <laughs> FTC. <laughs> if you are feeling called to resign from Prove It, um, you have to email support at proveithq.com. Yeah, email support. It's probably going to take a couple days because we all know what their customer support it took is like. Six days to hear a response. Six days? For me. For me. Oh my God crazy that's crazy (laughs) anyways we love you guys thank you all for listening thank Uh, you if you would leave whatever platform you're listening you know give me a give me a a cool rating say hello drop me some comments because it's the only way that we can get this out to more people and i think it's really important that we do that so that people realize that they're not alone so my name is aaron bees and this was dre in the kitchen (laughs) and um Part two, I guess we call it part two, right? I guess part two. The impromptu <laughs> part two. <laughs> yeah, impromptu part two, for sure. Uh, we hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you on the next episode. Bye, everybody. Yeah.